And welcome back to the Boardroom International Surfboard Show. Delmar Fairgrounds, San Diego, day one of two. The Icons of Foam continuing, honoring Mark Richards, presented by U.S. Blanks. There is Reno Abalero. And he looks like he is getting close to finishing things up. And Reno, quite the legend, not only a great surfer, but shaper. But real serious about this, who did we spot in the background just moments ago? Was MR keeping an eye on what he's doing? Yeah, no, MR, you know, in between getting bombarded by the fans out there trying to get autographs and photos with the legend, the four-time world champ. But, you know, he's out there checking it out. He wants to see how these guys are going about approaching a replica of, you know, the board that he made back in 81. And, uh, you know, there's six, six shapers, as you pointed out, bowing for that crown. Well, real quick, Reno has been shaping since the late 60s, working with Dick Brewer, and then in the 70s, Reno actually shaped for Mark Richards, and Reno has been doing a, doing a lot uh, of shaping, and uh, I believe when he was shaping, people would give him a flag, what are you doing shaping for the Aussies? Doesn't matter, right now he's shaping for himself, he'd love to take home that prize, which is a big deal, icons of foam, and it's presented by U.S. Blanks. Now, one thing that as we take a look at this deck, as we transition to our next guest, Kelly Slater was talking about not only the bottom contour and the rock and the shape and that like, but where he stands on the board and actually contouring the, the deck. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting because I was, you know, able to go down there and conduct those interviews at Lower Trestles. And so I heard that for the first time live with Kelly. And back in the day, I was fortunate enough to get boards from Nev Hyman out of Australia. And a few of the boards that I got were actually boards that were made for Munga Berry. And all the way back, it would have been the mid-90s, he was doing that back then. And it was unbelievable, you know, they were either completely flat decks, which you usually don't see. A lot of the boards nowadays are domed, but he would actually concave them out on the deck. And as Kelly pointed out, it's a way to, you know, have a board that feels like you've been on it before. Your board actually, or actually contours to your foot. And it's also a way to hide foam in other areas outside of having it bulked up under your front foot. What do you mean hide foam? Well, let's get to that a little bit later. We got about another five hours, of, but we do have a very special guest here. And when they talk about surfboards, it's about speed. But when they talk about surfboards and a surfer, it's all about traction, right? Yep. Staying on the board. And our guest? Well, John Dahl from Wax Research and Sticky Bumps. You've been making wax for 40 years now, is that correct? 44. 44 years. Wax research is 40 years old. Okay, and tell us 40 a years this year. 40 years, 44 years on the wax, correct? What's changed? My goodness. The original. Fast, fast forward, but tell me what is so unique and fantastic about your product that you offer today versus well, 40, 44 years 40 ago. years ago, we would soften uh, paraffin with motor oil. So, Sounds healthy. <laughs> that's kind of how it started. And, but we found better ways and better products and then sort of organically progressed with finding what worked better in softening and tackifying wax. And then I think we can claim credit in 92 of making a big breakthrough in wax with sticky bumps, uh, which was adding an inert ingredient it's all natural and the wax is biodegradable and all that. Uh, they really made it go on good, made it stay on better, kept the traction. So every modern wax is patterned after sticky bumps right now. Without, without getting too technical and for myself and as well for the viewers that aren't the mad scientists like yourself, what changes between a cool water wax and a hot water wax, knowing that if you use one and the other element, you're gonna have issues? Yeah, you can, you can use a warm water wax uh, in cold water, but it's but gonna get hard. can't go the other way. The reason is the melt temperatures of the ingredients, because you want to, if you're in Santa Cruz early in the morning, uh, you want that wax to go on pretty easily. So that's uh, due to softness. And then if you use that in Hawaii, it would be too soft and uh, wouldn't have the same grip. So basically, it's the melt temperatures of the various components. There's about nine different components in uh, Sticky Bumps bars. And, and obviously, sorry, Dave, obviously you guys are very well known for your, for your wax, but I see you got uh, quite a few other things here with you. Tell us about some of the other products. Yeah, well, we've done leashes for uh, about 12 years now. 
Uh, we do a full series of what we call Day Glow, which complements uh, deck pad series in that same uh, genre, and also a whole series of colored waxes. So we just try to do a high quality. We're not the a price uh, point product. We, if someone wants our stuff and and appreciates the company and and our integrity and in trying to put a good product out, then that's what we have. We've done. Uh, it's funny. I was just talking to Stan Pleskunas. We started deck pads 20 years ago, and Stanley came in and made a machine that uh, probably no one had done something like that before. And then we came up with a double diamond pattern as well, which is kind of the industry standard right now. And working with guys like Stan and, and a lot of Eric Baldwin and guys that uh, help us in design, it's an ongoing process. So in the future, we'll keep up with changing trends in deck pads, uh, which is really coming down to, <laughs> as minutely as it sounds, the water flow. And this is part of it uh, through stand-up. That in, in stand-up boards now, we're looking at uh, exhausting the water off the decks. And so it applies to surf as well. And with, so, that, with that said, obviously, you know, all stand-up boards, or at least all the ones I've ever seen, use pads. Are you in that market? Yeah. We do a full line of stand-up board bags, leashes, coils, straight. Uh, we do actually waxes where people on the nose or tail or, and on racing boards especially, we're going to step all the way on the back to round a buoy and you don't want traction, abrasive traction there. We make some very high melt waxes for that. Uh, full set, full deck tractions, all that. So we have a full line of uh, SUP accessories. What I like that I see are the diamonds that are dropped in. Instead of sitting on top of this much traction, your feet are actually sinking into that pad, yeah. correct? Yeah, and that's the idea that, um, really, it's a 20-year-old idea now, believe it or not, and it's been really successful. We have, on the website, you, uh, anyone can go look at the team members that we have. So our feedback is first class from well, Rostovich on down. That Oh, that guy knows how to surf, doesn't he? He, he does. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Best <laughs> in the world, possibly, in, without a contest jersey on. Um, and like a Craig Anderson, a phenomenal test pilot you have out there. But let me ask you about back in the early days of dripping paraffin onto boards, right? That was it. And then the idea of adding motor oil sounds slippery. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> but but now it worked was... better. It worked. It actually worked better uh, because it's a matter of softening what we had at the, in those days. And, you know, the waxes progressed with surfing. So it's, and today we do a, a, we call it the stickiest wax in the world called punt, uh, which is really just used where your feet are going to be in doing aerials or, you know, really wild maneuvers. So we've tried to keep pace, and in some cases, I think with sticky bumps in 92, we sort of allowed surfing to move forward. We, we hope that's our part in it, that we've done something. Amazing. Um, base coat, is it necessary? And when you do buy a new board, you definitely want to consider if you're going to do a, a tail patch, traction pad on the back, before you put any wax on. So you need to think ahead, right? Yeah, base coat's really good. In Cabo, we're just using base coat and nothing else. Oh, okay. It's 85 degree water and 100 degrees, and so it works. It's a great wax in its own, but the tropical, warm, cool, cold, all have a lot more traction additive in them. But they stay on the board so much better when you start with a base coat, especially on a new board, because whether they're sanded or not, you there's a film on there. So in building up your initial bump pattern with base coat, everything else is going to adhere to that pattern. Uh, we like nose to tail, rail to rail, diagonal both ways, and that builds a tight little bump pattern. But everyone's different. That's the fun of wax. You just, it's part of going surfing, you know. It, once you're waxing your board, you're committed to going out.
You're probably cringing when you see a recreational surfer with nine years of wax on his board. <laughs> well, I, I, sorry, I have, <laughs> go ahead. I have a few of those in my collection. <laughs> okay. I won't take it off. That's me. I don't change my wax very often, and sometimes traveling, it can be unique when you've gone from a cold water climate. We touched on it earlier, you know, warm, vice versa. Yeah. You talked about your, your uh, website, stickybumps.com, some of your team riders on there. Who's been the most intricate in the growth of the brand as far as giving back, giving feedback? Today, I would say it's uh, Dylan Goodall, who's doing really good, coming up through the junior ranks, and, and uh, that's what you want from a team member. We have a world-class women's team, we always have, but it kind of came through our Kauai connection and Bethany and Alana and uh, so many of them. And they're great at that. And you want them to tell you if something's not working. Yep. And a lot of team people are kind of hesitant to say that. And that's our emphasis. It's like, you're the ones that can surf this stuff better than anyone else. If the leash isn't working or the wax, anything that you see that you want to comment on, we want to hear the negatives as well as the positives. Dylan Goodell, yes, do. lots of inverted moves. Okay, so over the years, we've seen people wax their feet to clean it off, right? Especially at trestles. Is anybody waxing the underside of the rails for certain grabs? What's the craziest thing you've seen so far of some of these young aerialists? Well, there are people that buy a new board that are new to the sport that wax the bottom. Yeah. Uh, we That's see good. that. Uh, I slipped this morning because I didn't wax all the way to my rail, which I never do, and, and I will now. I, I still ride a 6'6", six, six and I had a good day today, so you never know. You're selling more wax because at these events, we're seeing some of these top surfers wax a little bit further forward because of where they're landing on their reverses, correct? They're using a lot more of their board. They're not only doing that, they're wax used to just be wax. The contest guys, you know, they had their favorite, but now they're really focused on what it is, how it's working, what they want on different parts of their board. So, and it's important. If, if the wax isn't working right, something else may not be. So it's neat for us to see these guys like really thinking about the preparation. It's like the tires on your sports car. You want the best to get the most out of that vehicle. And that's where we want to be involved is in that movement. And they're, they're thinking about it now. Everybody is. Stickybumps.com and Wax Research. Two different websites? Uh, we do have two different, but Sticky Bumps is, is where all the good stuff is. Home base for 40 years. <laughs> Wax Research is a parent company. We own Sticky Bumps brand, Ransom brand, uh, which is a big brand outside the United States and a and, uh, little, little different here because of our distribution setup. Our models to sell distributors, we have 55 worldwide. So we, we're careful of how we place the product. Um, so it's all over the place, yeah. All righty. Se secret ingredients, right, Todd? Yes, it sounds like uh, there's quite a bit of it, secret ingredients behind there, and it's great to hear you getting feedback from the riders. I know they appreciate the support. It's a two-way street with those riders. John Dahl, thank you for your time. Best thank of you, luck very to you, much. Wax Research. Stickybumps.com, check them out. Stay with us live. We're here from the boardroom in Del Mar, California. We'll be right back.